Hello again from Detroit, where I'm here at the Fox Theatre in Motor City to see the 2024 Chevrolet Silverado EV for the very first time. I've already shown you around the vehicle and given you some of my first impressions, and now we're going to get a chance to talk to some of the people behind the vehicle. And the first place I like to start is with the nuts and bolts of how this thing is put together, which is why I'm here with Nicole Krantz, Chief Engineer of the Silverado EV. Nicole, thank you so much for taking the time to talk with me. It's a great looking truck, but we're here to talk about the nuts and the bolts. So let's get on with it. Now the Silverado has such a big reputation in the trucking world for its durability and its versatility. How on earth did you go about engineering an electric vehicle that stood up to that reputation that the brand has? Yeah, I mean, we know that um, the Silverado customers have come to expect durability, capability, performance, towing from a full-size pickup truck, especially with the Silverado nameplate. Um, we certainly made sure that as we developed this truck from the ground up, we made sure that all of those things were basic design parameters in the vehicle. And then we took it a step further and said, now that we've got an EV architecture, what can we do? What can we provide? What can we do more of that'll give the customer an EV experience that is different than uh, an internal combustion experience without compromising without the compromising brand. any of the brand any of the key characteristics that customers who own full-size trucks have come to expect now full-size trucks has its own little universe right it does aftermarket accessories and modifications are a big thing you can get lift kits you can get new cooling systems for your engine you can get new cooling systems for your differential and your gearbox a whole industry worth literally millions upon millions of dollars built up on modding the truck after it's left the dealer lot, after it's left the factory. EVs have traditionally not been very easily approachable by the modding community because of the high voltage battery pack, which occupies the underfloor area, because of the motors, because of the complex electronics. Do you think that there is a future for heavily modified EV trucks on maybe a Silverado EV base? or maybe even the Hummer that, that this shares a platform with, the, the Ultium platform. Do you see that being something in the future of, of this truck? Well, I mean, certainly with um, Mary's announcement yesterday that shows that the Silverado lineup is continuing with things like the Trail Boss model, we're showing that the truck is more capable and has different capabilities than um, simply one type of configuration. As an example, the RST with the air suspension, we're showing the Trail Boss, and that truck is a different type of vehicle than the RST. Certainly, the EV market has its opportunities for different accessories. We're showing quite a few of opportunities in the um, media packs and the things that are behind you in terms of what we can do to accessorize an EV. And I think eventually, just like in every industry, people are going to start to learn um, what they can and can't accessorize, what they can and can't modify. And certainly, you know, accessories and accessorizing your truck and modifying it is something that um, the industry will find its way and understand how to deal with an electric vehicle. So maybe we can look forward to a lift kit in the future after all. I can't comment on that right now, <laughs> but the truck is very capable of um, many of the full-size truck capable things today. My final question is going to revolve around the capabilities of this as a work vehicle. Obviously, this, this is not a work vehicle, this is the <laughs> RST. This is almost what I would call a lifestyle truck as That's opposed right. to the work truck, which you don't have here today, but which does have a really immense capability on specs. And you really surprised us yesterday by saying 20,000 pounds in the future towing capability, which is 9.1 metric tons. Can you talk to me a little bit about the considerations that have to go into place to be able to pull that kind of weight? Because that would make it a, a class leader in the EV truck space, I believe. It absolutely would. Um, we've put many of the designs that we have available both across the work truck and the RST into the 20,000 pound uh, capable truck to ensure that not only does it have the capability of towing from a power and torque perspective, um, the experience is gonna be amazing because in EVs, we don't have shift busyness, transmission, cooling, things like that that we worry about. And then also um, having rear steer on that vehicle will allow us to have great trailering dynamics even with 20,000 pounds of towing. If you combine that with all of the safety features that we provide, um, it's really a, a dynamic and um, very good trailering package that's gonna have awesome performance. I think people are gonna love it. 
And does that mean a fifth wheel package is going to be in the future for this? I don't have any information on a fifth wheel today. This is what we're offering with our um, class five hitch. But today. eventually, obviously, I'm assuming with 20,000 pounds, people are going to want to tow their, their homes and things with it. Today, that capability is in our class five hitch only. Cool. Thank you so much for spending some time. I could talk to you all day about <laughs> engineering. I love the nuts and bolts of vehicles. I find it kind of the most interesting thing about EVs for as long as I've been driving them. So thank you for spending some time. Hopefully we can talk again after I actually have a chance to get behind the wheel and drive it. But Absolutely. Then, thank you so much. Thank you. I appreciate it. And thank you all for joining us here online. If you haven't had a chance to check out our walkthrough with the truck, be sure to follow the link below. There are plenty more things coming from this event, so keep your eyes peeled. And if you liked the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to leave your thoughts below or in our free to join Discord chat room. There is plenty of discussion going on. If you haven't already, make sure that you subscribe to this channel and our other channel, Transport Evolve Take Two, for longer takes and behind the scenes stuff. Thanks on behalf of the entire TE crew, go out to the folks on my right for being our 15 to $49 a month patrons. Special thanks to our $50 a month patrons, Chris Maxwell, Brian Newton, Jason Bordor, Dave Kitchen, Michael Goad, Ricky Leong, Andrew Martin, Guido Drahota, Brophy Wolf, Tesla in the Gong, Gordon C, Stephen O'Donoghue, Carl Hodgson, Anthony Coates, Ray Jean Fellows, Rory Litwin, Anonymous Freak, Jim Burness and Denny Hyde. And our deepest gratitude to our $100 a month Patreon supporters, Marcel Ward, Reggie Watts, Joe Bresney, JP Fagerback, Will Grayland, Matthew Drobnak, John Lyons, Christopher Lee Jones, Laura Reynolds, Paul Conway, Ellery Hennesley, and Ian. If you are feeling left out, you can join Patreon at the link below, or you can show us your support through Bitcoin, Kofi, or our cool swag store. Thanks for joining me, and as always, keep evolving.